In a candid conversation between Tucker Carlson and Alex Jones, the duo discusses the intensifying political climate and the alleged desire of those in power to provoke violence. Jones emphasizes the deceptive tactics of mainstream media in distorting messages, citing examples of taken-out-of-context clips. The discussion touches on the perceived efforts to undermine Trump and the potential for induced violence. The conservative psychologist points out the strategic use of false flags and provocateurs to manipulate public sentiment and justify extreme measures, urging vigilance against falling into such traps. But don't miss. How does Alex Jones suggest countering deceptive media tactics? What is the focus of the conversation regarding Trump and potential uprisings? How does the discussion address the use of false flags and provocateurs in political narratives? You think that as things get more intense, which they will, the people in charge desire violence. They're trying to provoke a violent war. Absolutely. They can't win in a peaceful fight. Absolutely. They can't win in a peaceful fight. Dealing with frustration and profound concern stemming from perceived power imbalances highlights the inadequacy of relying solely on peaceful measures to address perceived unjust behavior by authoritative figures. Um, but you have said, contrary to what they uh, say about you, you've said, no, 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 remain peaceful, period. Absolutely. I mean, what they do is anytime you're watching corporate establishment enemy media, you'll see a three-second clip. Absolutely. I mean... What they do is any time you're watching corporate establishment, enemy media, you'll see a three-second clip, the complexities of media manipulation and bias. It highlights how mainstream media sometimes betrays trust by distorting information, presenting it out of context, and shaping narratives to fit specific agendas. That, that's not, folks, you're being deceived when you see that. So I'll say, like, this is satire. So I'll say, like, this is satire. Understanding satire is essential because it helps clarify intentions and communicate humor or irony. It originates from the frustration of being misinterpreted or misunderstood by others or the media. It's the modest proposal by the famous Irish essayist and, and satirist uh, Swift that if the world collapses, I'll eat my neighbors. This is a joke. But I go, collapse of the world leads to that. They go, look, he just said I'll eat my neighbors. They're deceiving it's, it's like that refrigerator game where you have all the little words and you can move the words around and say whatever you want. Yes. They basically take our words, move them around, and that's a deception. But when you look at what they're saying, conservatives and populists and Christians are going to kill people and they're going to murder people. When you look at what they're saying, conservatives and populists and Christians are going to kill people and they're going to murder people. The portrayal of conservative groups' beliefs and tensions as inherently violent or dangerous, highlighting a sense of mistrust and disappointment. It emphasizes their perception of unjust demonization and slander, underscoring the perceived unfair treatment of conservative groups. And Trump is going to be a dictator, and he's planning to, you know, enslave everybody. But meanwhile, they're the ones taking him off the ballot. They're the ones indicting him. But meanwhile, they're the ones taking him off the ballot. They're the ones indicting him. The realm of perceived injustice and hypocrisy, shedding light on actions that adversaries argue undercut democratic processes and freedoms. It highlights victimization and unjust treatment. They're the ones saying, I mean, the Atlantic Monthly, that's the mouthpiece of Sauron, the mouth of Satan, came out two weeks ago and said, the headline was something like, even if Trump wins, we're just going to block him. Well, well, all Trump did was say, I want a 10-day investigation, which is constitutional. They said, they were honest. They said, even if he wins, we'll just decertify him. So they've basically indicted him in Georgia for saying, let's investigate. They're openly saying, we're going to disqualify him, and then it's okay. So again, there's a murder of logic. And, and, and people see that, and they're saying, oh, Trump is going to engage in terror, and there's white supremacy everywhere. So I think you can do 2 plus 2 equals 4. We know false flags are real. Provocateurs are real. We know they tried to stage the kidnapping of Governor Whitmer in multiple trials. People got released. They finally got the third trial, sent a few to prison, where you've got a bunch of marijuana. You, you, you've covered it detailed. A bunch of potheads, friendly little guys. They're homeless. <laughs> and then they tell them, we'll give you $10,000 a month if you just meet with us and just say you'll kidnap Whitmer. So you're going to see a lot more of that, and, and I just we need to disavow that because that doesn't fix it. We need to disavow that because that doesn't fix it. The importance of avoiding violence when dealing with grievances or conflict. It promotes a stance of upholding moral integrity even when faced with provocation. We're winning the, 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 the culture war 
So they want to induce us into violence. And they've said they're introducing legislation, uh, the Democratic Party in the House and Senate, to strip Trump of the Insurrection Act, uh, which George Herbert Walker Bush used during the L.A. riots. And they're saying, oh, we know when he gets elected, if he does, there's going to be huge uprisings. And he's a white supremacist. So we've got to drive him from office that way. So they're planning to torch the country when he's president-elect before he's in and try to intimidate everyone. So Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all of this uh, Hezbollah, Hamas protests. So Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all of this uh, Hezbollah, Hamas protests examines various groups and movements from different perspectives, analyzing their subjects and influence on social discourse. It emphasizes understanding the motivations and actions of these groups despite disagreements about their approaches or beliefs. Test, and again, I'm not against, I'm, I'm, I'm not for the war. I'm not against, I'm not for the war. When dealing with conflict and military intervention, it's crucial to adopt a balanced perspective rather than blindly supporting or opposing particular actions. I don't like how far Israel's gone, but, but they're invoking that and hyping that up now as their third rail or their fifth column is the Islamicist to then burn the country down within weeks of him being president-elect and thinking they can terrorize the American people and the establishment into removing Trump somehow during that period. They've already pre-announced that. So I'm telling you now, eight months out, that's their plan. Analyzing the conversation between Tucker Carlson and Alex Jones reveals insights into the calculated tactics employed by the media to shape public opinion. The discussion sheds light on the escalating political tensions and the alleged orchestration of violence by those in power. Jones underscores the media's deceptive editing practices, cautioning against misinformation. The conversation delves into the perceived attempts to undermine Trump, with the psychologist highlighting the risk of falling prey to staged events. This prompts a call for heightened awareness and critical thinking in navigating the complex landscape of political narratives. In asserting that those in authority aim to instigate an unpredictable response, there's a potential inclination towards repression and manipulation. This suggests that the actions of those in power may be driven by a desire to regulate or distort the authentic expression of individual or collective dissent. Consequently, the response may no longer align with genuine values, but rather gravitate towards inauthenticity, reacting to external stimuli. Despite provocations, the conservative values of order, sincerity, and commitment to maintaining peace stand strong. Opting for peace over violence is a demonstration of free will, asserting individuality in the face of attempts to dictate participation conditions or manipulate false forms of resistance. Critiquing media manipulation and the construction of deceptive narratives raises concerns regarding the struggle for the composition and authenticity of reality. It appears as an endeavor to coerce individuals into preconceived narratives that undermine objective truth, individual perceptions, and negate genuine experiences and insights. Alex Jones's characterization of his statements as satire, along with subsequent misrepresentations, serves as tasks highlighting miscommunication and hidden intentions. This mirrors conservative worries about speech distortion and the potential loss of meaning in public discourse where external forces obscure or alter an individual's authentic voice. Discussions about attempts to obstruct or disqualify politicians like Donald Trump from participating in the democratic process prompt inquiries into the nature of freedom and the role of individuals in society. Such maneuvers indicate a significant disconnection between the ruling elite and the true will of the people. Actions no longer seem to reflect genuine democratic participation, but rather transform into manipulative control. References to false flag operations and the orchestration of events to provoke specific reactions or shape particular groups express concerns about an individual's ability to identify authenticity amidst narrative control and manipulation. These actions pose a threat to an individual's capacity to navigate the world authentically in the face of constructed realities designed to elicit false responses. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. 
Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content. And although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.